director video action is full of B-movie actors. In addition to Charlotte Lewis, we also get Peter Weller and Robert Patrick. Both of those are known, of course, for a star-making film franchise. Robert Patrick's character is Jack Travis, and he's your typical hard-to-kill mercenary who even survived a gunshot to the head, thanks to the intervention of some wealthy guy called Wellington. And now this shady benefactor has called in that debt and wants Travis to babysit his daughter. Things are never going to be that simple, of course, and the movie title is a clue for those slow on the uptake. Fortunately, Travis is able to enlist the help of his pal Baxter, who's Peter Weller's character. He's just as crazy and is big on the spiritual meditation thing, and the two heroes spend most of the film trekking through woods while protecting the young woman. We get lots of scenes that are annoyingly dark and blurry action shots of people running past trees. Fortunately, there is plenty going on for genre fans to enjoy along the way. That includes the leather-clad henchwoman Katya, but before donning that more traditional attire, the villainess is introduced in the prologue when she shows up at Wellington's estate in a sexy evening dress. Hey! Who are you? John told me there'd be a party, so here I am. You must be mistaken. There's no party tonight. Oh, but there will be. Katya and the mercenaries like to use custom-made inventive weaponry. Sadly, we only see that clever dark gun used twice, and both of those times are in the prologue. But Katya seems to wear it at all times, just to remind people she's dealing with she's always armed and dangerous. Of course, this elite team of mercenaries have no trouble wiping out Wellington's goon squad, and they leave a video message that sets the main plot in motion. And the guy on the video is Jenna, who's even more evil than Wellington, and Katya is obviously his go-to woman. I've been informed she's staying with him. I would like you to extract her, unharmed, and bring her here to me. Simple enough. There is one minor complication. His name is Jack Travis. He used to be Wellington's main boy. I thought I'd killed him. Apparently not. Chances are he's working with a very dangerous, very bizarre friend of his. No problem. There is just one minor complication. The price just doubled. I don't like being held up. The risk got higher. So did the price. I said I didn't like it. I didn't say I wouldn't pay your price. Smart decision. Cheers. We have to have a scene to show how ruthless Katya is, and this comes when she offs a mole in Wellington's camp with a high-powered automatic rifle. This becomes Katya's main weapon for the rest of the movie and proves quite handy for clearing out obstructive trees as she chases a quarry through the forest. The filmmakers seem to realise that Katya is one of their best assets and she certainly gets plenty of screen time and that includes lots of violence in preference to talking. Katya's combat tactics are questionable at times, often standing in the open and making herself an easy target. Fortunately, she is the chief hench person in the film and seemingly immune to return fire. Perhaps the best scene is where she and her crew attack a bus the heroes have commandeered. These guys are really starting to piss me off! I wondered what it was going to take! Keep it steady. Come on, best shot! You loser! Solo female mercenary in an otherwise all-male team is a common occurrence in action films and while many of these roles are token, occasionally there is a villainess that does stand out. This one stars Michael Bean as Eddie Kate, a watchmaker with mental health issues and it turns out he was part of a military experiment to create assassins with false identities and now his former team want to silence him. 
All of these programmed killers of code names based off colours, and Ms. Blue is just as beautiful and deadly as you would expect. Hi, Eddie. I don't know you. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. You know me well. Why don't we go somewhere and talk? Talk about what? Whatever. The past. Or the Duke. I don't know any Duke. With the villainess are quite rare but decently staged when they do happen and we also get to see a sadistic side when she confronts the heroes in a hotel room. Ms Blue's eventual fate is left ambiguous and she's absent from the final showdown but Tracy Scoggins has a great screen presence which is well worth an honourable mention. Back with Katya again, we're certainly getting lots of bullets fired with no notable casualties, the sort of thing that only happens in action movies, and the female villain mixes up the weapons, tossing grenades, and eventually using a weighted lasso to capture the decoy daughter. By this point, Travis and Baxter have figured out the woman they're guarding isn't the real daughter, and before the end we get a complex revenge side plot with Baxter going after Wellington for setting him up. Action then shifts to Jenna's base of operations which is a nondescript office building and that conveniently provides lots of glass to shatter once the bullets start flying. And while Travis is dealing with the secondary mercenaries, Baxter gets the honour of taking on Katya. For some reason she's changed into a weird cloth and strap outfit which just looks plain silly. <laughs> If you were hoping for a decent final confrontation this time, you'll be disappointed yet again because what we get is constant shifts to first person view with Baxter throwing punches and Katya kicking at targets off screen. Looks like a no win situation, asshole. <laughs> Yes, Katya gets taken down with a single blow, which is a pity because she was headed for a much higher ranking placing before this finale.